Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Bernoun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious and breaking news that is happening right now. Turkey is certainly playing with fire, crossing Russia's red line, a line that's been clearly identified by Russia. We'll go to that in just a moment here. Uh, the title of our broadcast this evening, Putin declares an ultimatum to the U.S. as Turkey crosses Russia's red line uh, in Syria. And uh, the, we know we realize the ultimatum is about a week or so old already, but un, or actually, yeah, about a week old already. But unfortunately, Western media is not making it known to the U.S. public what Russia has actually stated about this. Is slowly but surely cre creeped around uh, Russia, finally creeping out of Russia into European media, including the Russian Insider and even uh, New Front has carried an article about this. And Russia One state television has covered the ultimatum, but the. Story I want to start with on right now is where the Turkish forces have actually entered into a town, Maria, which is just outside of Aleppo. Those that might remember Sputnik News carried an article about Russia's red line was Aleppo that Turkey dare not cross if they didn't want to enrage a major war. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, video right here. You see in the video footage here, just came out three hours ago on Twitter, tanks and armored uh, vehicles are entering inside the city of Maria, just north of Aleppo here, uh, and a very confrontational issue for Russia. And of course, Turkey is a NATO member. This is why they do this with boldness. And I have to tell you, friends, I really am concerned that what's going on when it comes to Turkey and the U.S. also being in uh, over in Mosul, that they're staging themselves in position, getting ready to attack Bashar al-Assad and Russia at the same time. As I stated in our broadcast earlier, they're playing chicken with Russia and Syria wanting them to shoot down one of their NATO planes, not to mention putting the pilots of NATO at risk. Do these pilots even have any idea they're sending you guys in there to get shot down so they can justify their war? You just become the sacrifice on their golden altar. Isn't that what it's going to be all about? Anyway, let's take a look at what's going on here real quick here, and then we're going to look at the red line here. This was the article here, Turkey's crossing of Russia's red line in Syria might inflame a hot war. That was back on September 23rd, only about three weeks ago, right? What did Russia say about that? However, Russia, he added, firmly insists that it is the Syrian government army which should control the line from Aleppo to Idlib to northern Latkia. This is the red line for Russia. In case the Turkish troops cross this line, it could drastically alter the situation in the region and trigger the process of turning the proxy hybrid wars into direct military actions between foreign forces in Syria. And this means a new world war. Warn the political analysts. That's what the political analysts had to say there. That's Russia's red line. And of course, they're showing you there when Turkey first, the picture right here, when they first entered into the uh, in, into uh, Syria, headed towards Jarvalis. Now, let's take a quick look here at the map here. First, we'll zoom into Jarvalis. Jarvalis is up here by the river, and uh, that's the Euphrates River. And if you remember, we'll go into this on a biblical side uh, later tonight. God willing, we will. Uh, look at the, the biblical implications about this. But Jarbalus is where uh, Syria, excuse me, the Turks first entered into Syria and they were claiming to go after ISIS, but instead attacked the Kurds and then said that the Kurds either get across the Euphrates or die. And the U.S. got a little bit peeved over that, a little tiffed over that. We saw from the State Department, from John Kirby and Mark Toner. But as you know, they don't really care that much about the Kurds. Seems like nobody does. Uh, and unfortunately, the Kurds, again, from airstrikes by uh, Turkey, have killed 200 Kurds here just recently so they could take these towns here. So let's see where they're at now. We are looking at the town Maria, and of course, Maria is just outside of Aleppo. Let's kind of back this out where you can see this well enough. Here is Aleppo on your map, the main center of Aleppo. Here's Maria right here. They're only about 15 kilometers, about 10 miles from Aleppo. That's the red line, according to Russia there, that if they cross that red line, it could be an all-out Third World War. There's a... Uh, uh, Idlib right here as well. You have Latkia, whereas Russia's air base right here. 
So they're, try they're really encroaching close. And what are they encroaching close for? They want a war. Turkey doesn't care. And I said from the very beginning, back when we were first covering how Turkey was working with the Ukrainian uh, Pero Poshinko, that they were intending on starting a war and they were going to take back Crimea. Russia do good to pay attention to our news broadcast. Maybe they could learn some insights that they may not already know about. You know, and let me tell you something, friends. I, I'm not saying that Putin is some great, wonderful guy. The difference between Putin and Obama, Obama is fighting for hegemony of the entire world for the Pope of Rome. He wants to make sure Pope Francis is the world leader and the Freemasons are going to make sure the Pope gets the third temple in Jerusalem. So let me tell you something, my Jewish brothers and sisters. The third temple is not for the Jewish people. They're going to build it for the Pope of Rome. And all you're going to do is get to look at it. Didn't they just declare recently that the Temple Mount has nothing to do with Jews? Isn't that right? You're doing good to even be able to hang on to the wall. And I'm there with you because I'm a Jew myself. I am a believer in Yeshua, though, so it makes me uh, a little bit different in that case there, but we're still brothers nonetheless. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, I think that even Israel should take a, a strong look at the way they treat their neighbors as well because God never told us to go war with these people here. So, you know... Anyway, I'm getting on a rant. Let's, let's get to the other parts of the issues of the news here. The ultimatum. This is on Russia 1. In fact, the, uh, the reporter on this just won a medal, uh, medal of honor by Russia as an outstanding journalist. Moscow, which is now cleaning up after Washington in the Middle East, responded to Plan B, which with steady nerves is what's said here. Anyway, Russian proverb, as he states here, Russians, Russia har is, is slow to harness. Let me get it back onto the right track here. Slow to harness, uh, harnesses slowly, but rides fast. Slow to start, but quick to finish. In other words, is kind of how you translate that idiom there. Uh, but he goes on to understand how fast and how seriously the Russian-U.S. relationship changed. It is necessary to rewind to the beginning of the week. Uh, and this is when it all happens. This is exactly what we will do, matching the events and start, starting with Monday. Firstly, it's important to point out that the absolutely central public speech of Vladimir Putin, and this is where he's going to go from. It's a speech that President Putin brought out to, uh, to the people here and what he had to say in that speech there. And it was a speech of an ultimatum is what it was. Uh, but a small piece of the speech was directed at the very depths of our soul, character, and mind, as the reporter states there. On Monday, October 3rd, on which the United States Department announced that the rejection of the truce and the cessation of cooperation with Russia on Syria. This is what I want to bring out to you as well. The White House spokesman, John Ernest, said that there is nothing to talk about with Russia on Syria. President Putin, for his part, was also not inclined to insist on the continuation of conversation, but simply introduced a new bill on the suspension of the U.S.-Russian agreement on weapons-grade plutonium uh, utilization. The terms of, uh, for the return of the agreement, Russian President decorated with such Christmas lights that it takes your breath away. In fact, we are talking about a radical change in American relations with Russia. Here, a textual what Putin expects from the United States if they want to return to compliance with the agreement on plutonium. And he's going to basically re reiterate what I just said, but I'd like for you to hear, hear the way he, he brings it out. A reduction of the military infrastructure and the number of the United States troops stationed in the territories of the member countries on the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Okay, this is ultimatum number one, which joined NATO after 1st of September 2000 to a level which they were on that day or the entry into the force of the agreement and the protocol of the agreement. All right, again, that's, that's ultimatum number one. Ultimatum number two, abandonment of the United States of America of the non-friendly policy toward the Russian Federation, which shall be expressed by A... Addition of the Law of the United States of America 2012 Act Majinitsky. And the directed against the Russian and United States Law of 2014 to support the freedom of Ukraine. Okay. B. 
abolish of all sanctions imposed by the United States in the respects of the Russian Federation, Russian individuals, and legal entities. C. Compensation for damage suffered by the Russian Federation as a result of the imposition of sanctions referred to in subparagraph B on this, para on this paragraph, including losses from introduction of forced counter sanctions against the United States of America. Three, submission of a clear plan by the United States of America for irreversible plutonium utilization covered by the agreement. If this is not an ultimatum, then what is an ultimatum? When one tells the other there is nothing to talk about with him, he answers him. Listen, buddy, if you want to not talk, then not talking is not talking. So be it. Maybe I'm too common to perceive it all, but I let diplomats engage in the rebuttal, is what the uh, commentator says there. Now, just to show you how serious we are getting right now, Russian Insider put out an article today. The slide toward war with Russia is, in, this is the title of this. In recent week, tensions have risen to a truly dangerous level. We must renew dialogue now. This came out six hours ago. Uh, says that uh, in recent weeks, U.S.-Russian relations have reached a paragraph fateful and exceedingly dangerous turning point provoked by growing tensions in multiple overlapping fronts. The CIA is reportedly re re readying a cyber covert action in retaliation for Moscow's alleged hack on the Democrat Democratic National Committee with Vice President Joe Biden, by the way, making sure it's all spearheaded into that. Uh, the article goes on to say that the saber rattling, uh, oh, wait, let, me, let me get into this as well. They also say that uh, uh, they've not had this serious of, a, serious of a situation since 1973 where they were at a DEF CON 3 at that time there. Uh, but now Russia just staged a civil defense drill in, involving up to 200,000 personnel and has deployed nuclear-capable missiles to its European enclave in Kaliningrad. Putin has also withdrawn from a long-standing nuclear security pact with the United States in defense of the suspension. His administration pointed to a radical change in circumstances, the emergence of a threat to strategic stability as a result of hostile actions of the United States of America. It's getting bad. Very bad, friends. Very bad. And I'm going to show you something, though. Not everybody supports the sanctions that they're talking about doing there. Um, we have, uh, let's see, it was the Italian prime minister uh, that actually came up and spoke up at the European Union uh, today and called out against doing. This is the Italian, uh, uh, the Italian prime minister right here. Uh, and he spoke against renewing sanctions on Russia. And he's one of many voices in the European Union that do not want sanctions on Russia, even though they're being pressured by a lot of other uh, uh, politicians inside of there, pressured by the United States as well. Uh, Germany, no doubt, uh, Holland, uh, uh, France, all these have been pressuring them to do these, uh, to do these sanctions. But the Italian prime minister, clearly not in favor of that. I'm Stephen Benoon. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It's so terrible in the day that we're living in. But again, it looks like that Turkey is crossing or about to cross the red line with Russia. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.